All right, welcome to my first live stream. I am uh, a bit nervous. I think this will be fun, something different. Uh, you're going to find out what it's like when I don't have a bunch of editing to help out uh, with me speaking on camera. But that's good, though, because I'll learn a lot, and hopefully you'll learn a lot. What we're doing today is I'm going to make some 3D printed fan covers. What I'll show you here. Let's see. I've got the final versions that I can switch over to. I'll show you what we're building here. Okay, so here's the story. I was building a pedestal arcade cabinet, and you can see that here. While I was building it, I decided that it needed more ventilation because I'm actually going to put the PC into it. And so my next actual project video will be the building of this and discussing things like the thermal issues, uh, software setup, hardware setup, encoders, and stuff like that. When I uh, decided to cut these holes out, they're three inch holes, 82 millimeter case fans, basically. And I put the fans in and that worked great. I got down to the temperatures I needed, which was about 40 to 65 degrees Celsius. And my thermals went way down, which is great. The problem is uh, this is not so aesthetically pleasing on the outside. And I wanted a way to cover these. And so I designed some fan covers and the ones I saw up on Thingiverse, there's a Mortal Kombat one that's amazing that we'll talk about. Matter of fact, I'll show it right here. Uh, but what we're going to end up building is these, the ones you see in the upper right here, the uh, Robotron one and the Moon Patrol. And the other one's a Galaxian one. I'll show you how I built these. And we'll do one of them, see how it goes. And then you'll probably have the ideas from there. I'll show you the software I used and everything. And I think everything I used was free. So it should be really nice. Okay. Here we are, here's the Mortal Kombat fan cover. This is up on Thingiverse, and I use this as a base. And the reason I used it is one, I wanted to use it as one of the covers anyway, but I wanted to template off of this cover. So what we're gonna do is take this, download the STL file here, and real quick, let's make sure that we get the, the credit for who made this. This is Agent Kane up on Thingiverse, built this beautiful Mortal Kombat cover. Now there's a remix of this that's fixed, where it just has a bit more attachments around here. But anyway, that's a good start. We're going to go into Tinkercad, and what we'll do is Tinkercad's a free site. You sign into it, and then once you're there, you create a new design. I'm going to upload, or I'm sorry, I'm going to import the STL that I have there. So let's see. Choose a file, and we'll go to the desktop. Okay, so there's the 80 millimeter STL file. And what we want to do is basically make a template for the fan cover part itself. So I'll copy this off. We'll just get that one out of the way. I want to get rid of the inside so we can reuse it. And then we've got our nice screw holes and our size and everything will be nice and consistent. To do this, there's a couple different things we're going to do. First, we're going to switch to a flat view. That makes lining up things better. I'm going to put a cylinder here centered. When I look over, I'm just checking my chat, make sure that nobody has questions. And then we're going to go down to a 0.1 millimeter, uh, basically adjustment level here. This is probably better done in other uh, things like Fusion and all, but I've been really pleased with Tinkercad and how easy it's been to use. So I'm going to stick with it. One of the things about Tinkercad, though, that, that I believe Fusion doesn't have is the number of sides here. You see this number of sides, 20. This isn't exactly a very smooth uh, circle here. So what we're going to do is up this all the way up as high as we can go. And that smooths it out. Now I'm going to just kind of do a quick scan of the corners here. Make sure that I'm not going over the model too much. A little bit of an adjustment. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna cut that out. So I'm gonna combine these two and I will say, uh, let's see here, merge. And then we'll take a look and see I missed a little bit there. So I'm gonna hit Control Z and we'll just take it up a tad. It should be good enough. All right, so that's using Tinkercad to basically get our initial fan model. The next thing we need to do is get the retro thing that we want to put in here. So let's copy and paste this. Control C, Control V again. 
There we go. Okay, now we've got a nice blank that we can work with, and we can switch over and start working on other stuff. I'm going to work on the Moon Patrol one. So I'm going to go do an image search for Moon Patrol. And a quick pro tip here. Um, when you do this, look for something that is a, a higher res. So you can see this resolution on this is quite a bit higher. When I was practicing this, I had a lower res image, and it really is going to give you a problem if you uh, are starting too low of res. The other software we're going to use is paint.net. And I'll get that loaded up here. Paint.net is a free paint program if you haven't used it. If you're used to other software, it's going to be great. But if you need something free that can do this, this will work really well. I'm going to go to select and we're going to take the little uh, truck here, the little, the little moon rover, I suppose. And we'll go crop to selection. The reason I chose this game is it's I wanted some retro stuff that was a bit different than the typical Pac-Man Galaga uh, Space Space Invaders stuff that's out there. I wanted stuff that I recognized that was still retro. So that's why I went with Moon Patrol. And over here, this magic wand, if you select that, you can easily delete things that are... This is so easy on retro graphics, right? Because there's just not a lot there. I want to be a little careful here. If you see something here where you're selecting the blue, just lower your tolerance down. There we go. Now we have a nice clean truck. The other thing I want to do here is we're going to convert this over. Let's see. Should I go black and white with it? Yeah, that looks pretty good. What we want is a silhouette, right? We're not 3D printing it in colors. We can always paint it later or whatever, but we want a silhouette that we can work with. And so I'm going to kind of fill in everything here. And I'm going to leave the tires, the centers of the tires, I actually want to cut those out. So we're going to just kind of select this here and cut these out. This way, when it does a 3D print, we'll have some holes where the tire middles are, and it'll give us a little bit of a indication. Now, the windshield, I want this to look like a windshield, so I'm actually going to fill this in. Let's see here. And I think what I'm going to do... Let's see, how are we going to do this? Let's take this rectangle here. And we'll rotate it around. I just basically want to make some kind of a windshield. So there we go. It looks actually a lot better than I thought it would. All right. Okay, so that gives us our basic shape. And what we're going to do is that we're going to put this in Tinkercad and make it three dimensional. But right now we just want to start out with the outline here. I realize the other thing we have to do is, Hey, how's it going, Paul? I'm doing good. I'm doing my first live stream. So I'm going to be a little clumsy. I've got to look over at this other monitor. I'm learning X split and streaming and talking on camera at the same time. So we'll see how things go. So we're going to paint this in here. Oop. Let's see if I can just cheat and fill these in. We're going to make a Moon Patrol fan cover. There we go. I like that. I like that. So we will take this and let's flatten this down. And we're going to just export this as a PNG, actually. So let's see. Call this Moon Patrol. Okay. I gotta rename it so make sure I don't stomp my other one. All right. So now we've got our little uh, PNG. We need to convert that to an SVG actually. And there's a website for that, of course. Now, an SVG, a scalable graphic or a scalable vector graphic, is an XML format that allows. It basically is a numerical representation of what we just did. So this should be really handy. Let's see here. We're gonna go to that file that we just made, and we're gonna this what is this PNG to SVG.com. I found this last night, and this made this so easy. You drag and drop. You hit generate. 
and if all goes well, you will end up with a vehicle. Oh, let's see if we can simplify it down to one color. There we go. And you end up with basically an SVG of what you have there. You can play with the colors. So I've got a gradient. It's not truly black and white, and that's why you're seeing it alter right here. Oh. All right, we can work with this because, again, this is about teaching how what process I went through to do this. And, of course, you work with this more, you tweak it, you'll get better at it. I now have... Let's see. I now have this uh, scalable vector graphic. Let's rename this to Moon Buggy. There we go. And we're going to move this up. Cool. Is my audio good? We're going to move this up to here. So we have our nice moon buggy SVG. And now we can go back to Tinkercad. Tinkercad will support, will import an SVG file. And that's why we went through all that mess of getting the colors uh, narrowed down and import and getting it to an SVG. So we can just drag this over here and say import. And we'll have that image that we just made and flattened brought in. Now, we can resize this. You want to make sure you don't resize the fan cover. The fan cover is exactly, in my case, I wanted an 80 millimeter fan, or 82 millimeter fan cover. So the fan cover is exactly what I want. So I want to resize this. Now, when I drug it here, you can see that it distorts, which is not what I want. So I'm going to control Z that. And if you hold left shift and do this, it will do it in a nice, uh, consistent fashion, which is what we want here. We're going to shrink this down. Now, if I if I haven't touched the sides to kind of bridge it, it's going to lose kind of what what I want it to be. So what I want is I actually want to ground under it. Let's give it a, a metallic look. Oh, not a whole uh, metallic look here. And give these both metallic looks so that they're the same color. And this is kind of what I'm envisioning, almost like a, a metal fan grill, grill where I might paint it later. And we don't have ground under it here, so we're going to work on that. This scribble thing in Tinkercad is really handy. Um, you basically get something like this, and we're just going to give it some rough ground. And when you say done, you get, you know, about what you drew. Oh, let's get over here. Okay. So I'll show you how this gets put together. We're going to resize this so that it hits the edges. We're going to put it under the wheels, and we're going to be really careful. We want to make sure the wheels hit this. Because this is actually supporting this when we 3D print it. Uh, so I'm going to put the wheels down in there. That's That looks good. Now, we've got a bunch of height issues here. This right here, I believe, is 2 millimeters. Yeah, so if we click here and give this a 2, that's 2 millimeters now. We can check this, make sure this is 2 millimeters. There we go. So everything's consistent now. Give this the same color. The color thing doesn't matter in Tinkercad. It's just a preference by me. I like to have everything look like it's going to look when it's put together and printed. And now if I group these, I can see that I've got this pretty solid on the wheels, so that'll get held up. And we are end to end here. So that's it. That's basically the tutorial of how I did these fan covers. Now I'll go, I'll go and show you the final ones that I made. Oh, let's see here. So I'm going to transition over it. There we go. So you can see in the lower right, uh, the, the tank. Now the tank's facing the wrong way here. And that's one thing I want to bring up that I learned when I did this. When you print on a nice bed, like a glass bed or something, that side is really the side that ends up being really smooth and finished. And so what I regret doing is either flip it when you go to print it or flip it here. And the reason being is Moon Patrol, the tank always faces to the right. The Moon Buggy or whatever it is, it always faces to the right. So it's a little awkward on mine that it's facing to the left. You can see on the left here, I did a Robotron one. That one was a little bit more complicated because the Robotron graphic doesn't have a, uh, it kind of goes up to his shoulders. And I was trying to figure out how to make that, that triangle work there. So I basically centered it. 
And then the other one, I have the Galaxian ship up here and I added supports on it to kind of center it. So those are all three different techniques. You can go edge to edge on the fan covers. You can add a ground to it if you need to. Um, or you can do something where, like I have supports on the Galaxian one. I angled them off to try to make them look cool. But uh, my next video will be applying these to this arcade cabinet and actually showing the build on this arcade cabinet and the software install. So if you want to see that, subscribe. And I will get that out to you as soon as I can. I want to thank you for watching my first live stream. This was uh, a bit nerve-wracking for me, but uh, very exciting. It's kind of a cool way for me to get you more content in a very quick way. And also, it's just another skill set I'm learning here. The other thing about this is hopefully this will be a way for me to get you smaller projects that build up to the larger ones instead of going a month without getting any content to you. So you can see some of the smaller things and also more of an interactive thing where if you have questions, you can talk to me and I can help you out as we go through it. So thank you, Vince. I appreciate that, buddy. Appreciate watching. Thanks, everyone. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. And until next time.